السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to the next lecture of ISO 17 or 25-2017 We have explained in the previous lecture that the lab has to plan and implement actions to address risks and opportunities All risks that can have a negative effect on processes, procedures, documented information, organizational responsibilities, lab activities and results and all opportunities that can be used to improve the results and increase the effectiveness of management system and we recommend it to implement risk analysis risk analysis that will cover all lab activities inside the lab from sampling up to final report and find out what are the risks and opportunities need to be addressed to improve the results and increase the effectiveness of management system Risk analysis and resulting action shall be documented and implemented in the management system and shall be reviewed and addressed in the management review every year. And what will we gain if we did risk assessment inside the lab? Number one, we will prevent undesired impacts on the lab activities and also on the results and will enhance opportunities to achieve the purpose and the objective of the lab to improve the results and by eliminating the risk that can have a negative effect on the, res the results and lab activities and use opportunities that will increase at the end the effectiveness of management system. In this lecture, we will start explaining the scope of this document, for whom this document is applicable. This document is applicable for all laboratories that perform tests, calibration, and or sampling and specify some requirements for competency, impartiality, and all operations in the laboratory to enable them to ensure that they are competent enough to do all their activities according to international guidelines and they are able to get accurate and reliable results and at the end, that will provide highly confidence to that customer. Also, this document applicable for accreditation bodies and lab customers. Accreditation bodies and lab customers, they can use also this document to confirm the competency of the lab. Also, there are some definitions mentioned in this document, which is number one, impartiality, which is the presence of objectivity. And that means there is no conflict of interest, so there is no negative effect on the results and lab activities. Number two, complaints. Expression of dissatisfaction by any person like the customer or organization relating to lab activities or results of the lab. Also, there are comparison, two types of comparison. Number one, which is inter-lab comparison and intra-lab comparison. What does it mean inter-lab comparison? Which is comparison between different laboratories. To evaluate the performance of their method by sending one sample with no concentrations to different laboratories to analyze the same parameters using different methods and different instruments to evaluate the performance of their method but intra-lab comparison this will be comparison but within the same laboratory using the same method and same instrument this will be by analysis of one sample, one sample spiked at different levels, low level, mid level, and high level, and make six to ten replicates from each one of them, then calculate relative standard deviation for each level relative standard deviation then take the average between relative standard deviation calculate the variance between all of three levels by calculation of pooled relative standard deviation and that will be explained in details inshallah in method validation course that should be less than 20% to be accepted internationally according to international guidelines 
So the difference between interlab comparison and intralab comparison, interlab that will be between different laboratories, that will be within the same laboratory, both of them to evaluate the performance of the method, that will be using different methods and different instrument, because every lab using different instrument and different method, but at the end they analyze the same parameters, also intralab using same method and same an instrument. After that, we will find PT, Proficiency Testing Sample. This sample with non concentration from accepted international PT provider like FEBAS, they have to have ISO 17 or 34 to be accepted to all laboratories. Like FEBAS, they will provide many laboratories by one sample with same parameters non concentrations to evaluate the performance of a specific method to analyze these samples with accurate and reliable results. After that you will find laboratory. Laboratory in ISO 17 or 21 2015 it was certif certification body this word certification body replaced by laboratory one and in ISO 17 or 2004 Conformity assessment body replaced by laboratory and laboratory which is an organization that can perform testing, calibration and or sampling and we explained that before if you are responsible for sampling you have to apply all requirements for this document on the three activities testing, calibration and sampling but if you are not responsible for sampling in this case, you will mention in the final report that you are not responsible for sampling and you will not apply requirement for this document on sampling. After that, you will find decision rule. This is a new word added to this edition, decision rule, which is the rule that describes how much measurement uncertainty is accounted for when stating conformity to with a specified requirement. That means stating conformity means you will decide if the sample will be accepted or rejected after addition of measurement uncertainty. As an example for this, if concentration came out of the parameter 20 mm and maximum residual limit is 15 is 18 BB as example is 18 BB and measurement uncertainty 20% 20% of this result it will be 20 BB plus minus 4 so it can be 16 it can be 24 that will be rejected that will be accepted under the maximum residual limit. In this case, they found diagram. This diagram, this upper specified limit, this lower specified limit. In this case, you will find upper specified limit, which is maximum residual limit. You will find result plus measurement uncertainty, both of them in between in the specified limit. So this sample will be complied. And here you will find both of them out. Results and measurement uncertainty, both of them out of the specified limit. So this will be non-compliant. And here you can find that there is no firm conclusion that the result or is compliant or not. You cannot confirm, you cannot decide. But in this case, in these two cases, you need the decision rule. The lab management has to decide if the sample will be accepted or not according to evidence. 
and you will put in your consideration many things like customer satisfaction he should be satisfied also there are some parameters very danger very uh, risky like aflatoxin compounds they are very carcinogenic compounds and also like chloromphenicol chloromphenicol in food it's banned by European it should not be more than less than 0.3 BB this minimum performance required level so in these cases you can decide if you will accept the sample or not and there are also some other political issues if the country like as example if the country is imported country and they want to many samples to come to the country in this case they can accept in this case decision rule will be will go back to the management they will decide the rule that describe how much measurement uncertainty is accounted for when stating conformity with the specified requirement and also inshallah we will explain that in details in the measurement uncertainty training course also there is verification and validation this is very common word for any analyst verification verification to verify that a given item process procedure material compound measuring system fulfill the requirement like in our case if you will use any reference method reference method will be already validated and they have their performance parameters and you will verify that in your lab using your instrument you can analyze same parameters using this reference method or not so you will verify if you can analyze using, using this method in your lab or not also materials any chemical any standard uh, any instruments you will buy you have to verify if you if, if it meets the specification or requirement or not validation this is for in-house method if you have method if you already developed method, new in-house method, and you want to validate the method, you want to evaluate the performance parameters for this method, or method already using before to analyze same parameters in sample, some parameters in sample, and you want to use this method to analyze the same parameters but in another sample. You can use this method, but at the beginning you have to validate this method you have to evaluate method performance parameters and that inshallah we will explain in details in method validation course thank you and see you in the next lecture inshallah